Welcome back to Sailing El Haleo! This week we continue our long trek north and I have fallen behind on videos once again. <laughs> so this will be a good opportunity to give you a real-time update. Um, you guys will actually see this in just a few days. So right now currently we're in Hampton, Virginia, which is just north of Norfolk and we're right on the edge of Chesapeake Bay. After our hell ride to Hampton the <laughs> last time getting here, we're taking it a little, we're being a little cautious. So we're gonna wait until we have favorable winds on Thursday and we're gonna try and make a 60 mile trek up to Mill Creek. And that's gonna be a long day, but I think we can do it. The wind uh, should give us a little bit of a boost. So why don't we go ahead and get right into this? So grab a drink, climb aboard and let's get going. After spending four days waiting out bad weather at Redbird Creek in Georgia, we got back on the road and headed towards the lovely Hellgate Passage. <laughs> Hellgate is appropriately named. It is located between two inlets and relative to the current, you're going one direction. And as you enter the Hellgate Pass, you actually reverse direction relative to the current. When you get halfway through, you reverse direction again towards the entrance of the other inlet. And then you reverse a fourth time <laughs> as you go away from the passage. So Hellgate can be a wild ride even at the best of times. Here we are entering Hellgate, and as you can see, it's a very unassuming pass. And the first time I went through it, I didn't know exactly what to expect, but the name kind of tipped me off that it might be a wild ride, <laughs> and it was. So this time I kind of knew what to expect, and I had been listening to reports of boats that had gone through it in the four days when I was in Redbird Creek, and they some people were reporting as low as four and a half feet depth at low tide. So I knew we couldn't go through then, so we waited, we had to go on the upper half of the tide range and we made it through, we had no depth issues. We made it through the first leg perfectly fine and that's good, that's the tricky part where there are some shallow, narrow spots. Once we got to the other side, the current kind of started to push us out of the channel and I could have fought to stay in the channel if I had to, but on the far side of the pass, there's actually a wide area where it's 12 feet deep. And if you're following the official Intracoastal Waterway, you're supposed to go about halfway out into the river. There's another channel marker, but it was plenty deep. And as you can see, it started to get quite choppy. And I just wanted to get, a, get across to the far side of the river where we were gonna anchor uh, in the lee of the wind. And <clears throat> I decided to go outside of the channel and uh, take a shortcut. And it can be a little risky doing that, but uh, it was plenty deep, I just didn't know if we'd hit any obstructions or anything. And it's pretty rare that you ever run into an issue, but we decided to take the chance um, to get out of the chop. Yeah. We anchored for the night in Vernon River just past Hellgate, and it was a very exposed anchorage, but the wind was forecast to be blowing out of the northeast all night, and there was a stand of trees just off on the north side that would protect us from those winds. And we had a nice calm evening, all the while, there were white caps breaking on the opposite shore. In the morning, when I get up, I wish that we could stop and take each day. In the evening, when I get home, I always hope to find you all alone and out of harm's way. Every time I look around, I find you looking back at me you're everything i ever hope to see in the morning when i get up i wish that we could stop and take each day in the evening when i get home always hope to find you all alone and now
see In the morning when I get up I wish that we could stop After spending the evening in the Vernon River, we actually took a couple of days off of filming. During that time, we made our way through Savannah, where we stopped and topped off our diesel, and we made it into South Carolina, where we stopped just across the border to anchor for one night. We weren't really happy there. It was kind of a sketchy anchorage, and the next day we had some rain projected starting around noon. It was a very short trip up to Bull Creek, which is one of my favorite anchorages. It was only like 15 miles, so we decided that morning to go ahead and move our way up to Bull Creek, where we anchored for a couple of days. This video picked up with us leaving Bull Creek as we made our way across Calabogue Sound and steamed towards Hilton Head Island. I timed our departure from Bull Creek so that we'd get a boost from the tide all the way up Calabogue Sound. As we entered Skull Creek to go around Hilton Head Island, I knew there would be a transition in the tide somewhere in Skull Creek, and when we hit that transition, we slowed down significantly. We had a choice to make. We could keep going all the way through Skull Creek and across Port Royal Sound and make our way towards Beaufort, but we'd be fighting the current the entire way, and we'd be doing half the speed we'd be doing if we were going with the current. I decided to go ahead and try an anchorage right off Hilton Head Island called Hickory Bluff. And it had some checkered reviews. Some people said it was very small and not deep enough. And I actually bypassed it on the first time um, because I didn't think it would work. And that was when I was using the navigation charts. Now that I'm using the sonar charts, uh, it looked like there was a lot more depth there than what people were, were stating. So I went ahead and did a 300 foot circle, a sweep around where I had planned to anchor, and it was plenty deep. Um, a lot of the reviews said it was deep and there was plenty of room, and that's what I found when I was there. So I'm not sure um, what was going on with the other reviews when people said it wasn't deep enough. But I had 12 feet the entire way, 300 um, degree circle, or a 300 foot, 360 degree circle around the green anchor icon. So I went ahead and anchored there for the night so I could get with the, so I could sink back up with the tides and get a boost all the way down Skull Creek across Port Royal Sound and at that point the next day the tides would be transitioning and I would be going with the tide up to Beaufort so I'd be getting advantage from the tide the entire day so I decided to do that. breeze and the waves, the 
slower pace The salty breeze and the waves No matter how place And that's all we have time for this week. I do have to apologize for two musical montages in one episode. <laughs> if you're a child of the 80s, you'll love it. If not, I know it sucks. I'm sorry. I try not to put two in one episode, but that's just somehow sometimes the way things work out. <laughs> I would like to give a massive shout out to my Patreon crew. Without your guys' support, I would not make these videos. And my Patreon crew is Joan and Juddy Judnick, Val and Chris Alcorn, Denise and Eli Sackett, Joan and Jim Linbo, Sherry Erickson, Deb Shaw, and Matthew Spotton. Thank you guys so very much. Your support really means the world to me. If you would like to join our Patreon crew, there is a link in the description down below, and that'll take you to our Patreon page where you can sign up, and that'll give you access to a whole bunch of photos, videos. I try and do update videos a couple of times a week when I'm traveling to let you know I'm where I'm at and what's going on. And you would help support the channel, which would be awesome. And if you do like our videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. That helps us out a lot as well. Alrighty, I hope you all are well, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>